Okay, I would like to give you a tour of the of the instrument. The difficult thing I have to do is to figure out the best angle to hold it to minimize the glare. So I will need some kind of pen to show you. Over here is the function and in this case the function is color. Over here it says M1, 2 degree, D50 and this is the battery indicator. This is the name of the function I believe. Oh, it says sample bus because it could be used for comparing to other sample but in this mode it's only showing you the measurement of one color at a time. So you have the three numbers here, the three variables L, A, B, all denoted with a star to the right of the of the symbol name and it says L star is 64.12, A star is 0 0.12 and B star is 0 0.17. So now that's a, not a fluorescent or a very uh, optically brightened material. It's not brightened at all. It's actually coming from a color checker chart, 24 patch standard color checker chart. So if I use the instrument here to measure this patch, this patch is Caucasian skin. If I place the instrument on the patch and I depress the head all the way to the bottom, you'll see what happens. There's a tiny little noise and then the value displays here. It's 65.49 and 16.12 uh, and 17.83. Yeah, uh, the blue sky is right next to it. The blue sky patch, see different value. If I measure the yellow, the, the, the yellow, the L should be much higher. See the L has gone up to 80, which is quite high, 80.88. That's a bright yellow. Now what's interesting is with this instrument is you can measure all kinds of materials, of course, but the first thing you want to do is you want to calibrate it. And the instrument is supplied with a calibration plate like this. It's, a, it's uh, mounted on a piece of plastic and there's a little guide here that notches guide for this. There's a hole here and the trackpad it's called. So I'm going to place the trackpad on the notch. See I can't place it uh, in just any way and the, the thing sits perfectly in the center of the calibration standard. So I'm going to place it flat on a surface and now I need to navigate to the calibration menu. So I'm going to hit the up arrow I believe this is not what I want to do. I'm going to try this, but probably not. No, this is alternating just between the function. Uh, this is not what I want. So I want to go down to this menu right here and I, I'm going to hit enter. And once I hit the enter button, then I have to go to the menu. The menu is here. And I'm going to hit enter on the menu. And then I believe is the second one down, or is it the third one down? There's something called here. Let me put on my glasses because without my glasses, I'm becoming uh, unable to see very well what's going on. So I think it's this menu here. It says calibration. Oh, function? No. Calibration is the one at the top. So calibration is here. Once I'm on the word calibration, I'm going to press enter and then it says white calibration and it displays the last date, the date of the last calibration. Unfortunately, the glare of my lamps at the, on the ceiling is not all that great. Maybe I should close them, but uh, and the camera cannot focus all that close. So I'm going to place it back on the calibration reference and I'm going to depress the head. That's what it's waiting for now. Hold it. And you see it says calibrating. I think it does two readings. One and a second one. And then once it's gone, done, then you see it comes back. And calibration is successful. So now I'm going to place the, put the calibration uh, plaque away. Because I don't need it. I keep it in this plastic bag which is supplied with the instrument 
not to dirty it up. Now I'm going to go back to some uh, chart again and this time I'm going to be measuring just paper. Uh, this is paper. This is called Epson proofing standard paper. So I'm going to go back to I need to go back to this to the previous menu. Actually, yeah, go back one more actually this previous menu until I go back to what I'm going to need my glasses again. Silly me. So I need to go back to the menu. Menu is here. No. Option. Option. This this go back menu. Yeah. Select target. One more. And I'm on sample. Now I'm, go, I'm, I'm back here. So I'm back on color LED. So I have the instrument sitting on a piece of paper. I'm going to press the head down. And you see the reading has changed. And now it says. 92.51 and 1.38 5.68 this is interesting because this is the backing of the sheet now if I measure the front of the sheet which is the good side which is where the ink is supposed to go and let's see what kind of reading I get see I get 91.87 minus 0 0.17 and minus 3.6386 that still is uh, quite uh, quite blue. I wasn't expecting what uh, this uh, blue like that. All right, now on to this sheet of paper. This sheet of paper is Canon Photomat. Uh, this is the first step of calibration process or linearization process in a rip made by a company called Oris. Now I'm going. I'm interested in the measurements of these colors because these determine the extent of the gamut for this printer. So I'm going to use the instrument to analyze uh, the colors over here. There could be two things that I, I use to analyze. I could be analyzing the LED, or I could be analyzing the density. So let's see if we can get any kind of readings of the LED first. So. This is where I'm placing, you see the head of the instrument, it goes here. I'm placing the circle right on the patch. I'm going to be measuring the cyan, then the magenta, then the yellow, and then the black. The rest here of the scale is not really interesting for me because the software will uh, determine the, the, the linearization based on the whole scale here. So let me first bring the head down and see what we get for this paper. So it says 60.87 minus 27 and 91 fi minus 54.22. This is the value that I had recorded at the bottom here for cyan and is the LEB for magenta LEB and for yellow LAB and for black LAB. If I bring down the brightness down you'll see a better uh, better yeah you'll better see those numbers and for the cyan you see the first thing I note here under this column is status T which is the density 1.01, 1 1.05, 1 0 0.97 and 1.28 so I could compare these numbers to some kind of target, could be Grackle, could be something else, but it would serve me as to decide, you know, what to do about if it's possible to change the amount of ink that is transferred over to this area, because this is going to determine how large or small the resulting gamut is going to be for this printer. So that's once I have that part the linearization process done then I can move to this other part this other part in this rip is uh, a matter of measuring the the uh, characterization target and in this case this characterization target TC 3.5 came from uh, uh, Great Tag Macbeth Profile Maker 5 software 
and same thing I didn't measure it with uh, my FD7 but I could have measured it by hand with the FD7 but lucky for me I have an FD9 so with the FD9 I just fed the chart in and it went and no problem and once I've done this then I come over to these charts this chart these two are well, 9874 and then it's divided in two pieces because this, this the sheet of paper I had in my hands uh, to measure was uh, eight and a half by eleven, so I could not uh, get the whole target uh, an, in A3 size as I would normally would. So there's two sheets, one of two and two of two, and this completes the uh, the patches required for put this tar target together. Now, an, an interesting thing happened when in the course of measuring. There's one patch over here in the center that represents unprinted paper. Now this patch is very interesting because I was able to measure it both with my FD9 and the FD7. I hope you can see the difference, the, the writings here. My camera cannot focus all that well. But if I was to measure the white patch with my FD7, I would place it here. There it is, this is the white patch, and you can see this is very fluorescent, 92.44, 3.94, minus 11.54, that's very blue. Now let's see what's in uh, over here, over here we see that the FD9 has measured 93.38, 4.45, minus 12.08. Now that's the same, 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 same exact patch that I just read with my instrument. And the instrument reads 93.81. You see how close this is from 93.38? This is very clear, very, very, very close. It's a dest you know, you know, 0.5 difference, not even. 4.4 over 4.45. That's again very, very, very close. And minus 11.21 versus minus 12.08. I can calculate this difference here in delta E76 or delta E2000 and this is going to be pretty close under 1 almost. Uh, maybe under 1.5 but certainly not 2. So meaning that the inter instrument agreement, the difference between this instrument and my FD9 is very 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 good. So this is encouraging. That's one use of this instrument. Another use of this instrument, if I was able to take the head off here, is I think this is how I do it. Okay, if I take the head, the, actually, I think it's called a trackpad, and I'm going to be placing here the the uh, ambient elimination adapter. So this is in the box. Same, similar to what goes. Uh, what x right sells with their i1 pro and what this does is it fits over the the uh, the aperture of the instrument like that and once i fit it over and i can rotate it it's held in place securely and i now i have to navigate to the illumination so let me see if i can navigate to the illumination i think the function i have to go back over here it's color now it's C, I have to go, I think it's this, it's the next group of menu. The next group of menu over here, eliminates the first item at the very top. Now can I show you this? Uh, boy, it's difficult to see you know, all that glare and my camera cannot focus all that well. Cheapo webcam, uh, it's the best I can do. Eliminates, I'm going to try to hold it so you can... <laughs> have a chance of reading it but this is it it's is, this is it folks this is eliminance so you have to trust my my word that it's eliminance so I'm going to select it so now it says here sample and then there's EV for exposure value TCP for temperature color temperature and Delta UV probably compared to D50 and it says two degree so now if I I'm going to need to use the button over here because I cannot depress the head anymore to make a reading. So I'm gonna make a reading by I'm just gonna hold it like that for instance and see what it does. See it made it made a reading. It's not a lot of light. Six lux 
and then 4789 which is the the color temperature and then minus whatever 8.8112 so I'm going to show you uh, over here in this corner I have uh, a light boot it's uh, over here it's a uh, it's a just normalish light boot and I'm going to be taking a reading of this light boot with the instrument. Let's see what happens. I'm going to extend it all the way here and then hold it right there. I have to get the, the, the button and then press the button. As soon as I hear the beep finish then that means that it's at. I'm gonna hold, take it one more because I I inadvertently press it a second time. So now let's see what it reads. It reads. It reads. It reads. It reads. What does it read? It reads sixty six hundred and sixty three lux forty six five fifty through fifty three k and minus. 003 in delta UV so 4600 K so this is not totally 5000 K it's it could be you know you could consider it far from 40 from 5000 K but it's not really the uh, the degree Kelvin of the temperature that matters so much uh, when you do using these uh, uh, cabins uh, but uh, this is my opinion this is based on my experience so I'm gonna Press uh, stop recording the video now and we'll, we'll see what happens.